Well, good morning. This is Faith at Home with Pastor, and we're uh, this is Sunday, September third, and we're we're going to get into uh, John chapter eleven uh, today. So um, let's um, let's go ahead and begin with prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for this opportunity for us to gather together. We think about Labor Day weekend, and just um, you know those of us who are working, but we all have positions and and opportunities, Lord, to serve. Uh, we just thank you for those opportunities. We pray that you'll bless the study of your word. Talk about the, the raising of Lazarus uh, and Mary and Martha and, La you know, just uh, that whole situation, Lord. We pray that you'll bless our study of, of your word and, and that you are the resurrection and the life. Help us to understand what that means for us. Uh, we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So, uh, getting into John chapter chapter 11, um, yeah, 10 ends with verse 40, he went away across the Jordan to the place where John had been baptizing, uh, and there he remained. Many came to him, and, and they said John did no sign, but everything that John said about this man was true, and many believed in him there. Um, so now we have chapter 11, uh, first eight verses, now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord and, uh, and, and with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, it he said, this illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God might be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you. And are you going there again? Beginning verse 9, then Jesus answered, are not, there are not 12 hours in the day. If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. After saying these things, he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought that he meant taking rest and sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died. And for your sake, I'm glad that I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. So Thomas called the twins, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. Now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. But Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever... Everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in private, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary rise quickly and go out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Now when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man also have kept this man from dying? 
Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an order, for he had been dead four days. She said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank, thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this on account of the people standing around, that they may believe that you sent me. When he said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The man who had died came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips, and his face wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what, had, what he did, believed in him. But some of, of them went to the Pharisees and, and told them what Jesus had done. So the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered the council and said, What are we to do for this man performed many signs? If we let him go on like this, everyone will leave in him, and Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. But one of them, Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing at all, nor do you understand that it is better that for you that one man should die for the people than that the whole nation should perish. Okay, we'll stop. Stop there. Um, okay, as I read all this 49, 50 verses, um, it, many of us have heard this story many times, read this story many times. But anything jump out at you? Anything that you thought, oh, I didn't think about that? Or strike you as odd? Well, it, what struck me is that um, Martha's kind of vindicated, I think, from the story where she's busy with the house because she was the first one to come out to meet Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's just like you can. We don't know much, much about Lazarus's personality. I'm curious, being the brother. <laughs> Of, uh, you know, did, did, did his sisters take care of him? Uh, you know, I don't know. It's like, what was Lazarus's personality? Because Martha is always a, a, a mover and a shaker. You know, it's like she's, she, you know, the story where she was working and Mary was at Jesus' feet. Uh, we got going to see that. And it's interesting, they talk about, you know, this is the Mary that, that uh, wiped Jesus' feet with her hair, uh, anointed with oil. We don't really hear about that until next chapter. So it hasn't happened yet <laughs> in the Gospel of John. Uh, but, but like I said, John's never written with the idea that this happened and that and that and that. You know, John assumes you know all these things. Um, but but let, me, let me kind of share this. The raising of Lazarus was not in any of the other three Gospels. And that's a head scratcher. It's like... Why not? Why not? I mean, it is. I mean, this was this was the catalyst uh, for which the Pharisees like we got to get rid of this guy, uh, and I think Jesus knew that. You know, my time has not yet come. Several times he says, "My time has not yet come. My time has not yet come." Um, he knew very well. He raising Lazarus. Okay, his time is almost here. <laughs> it's time pretty much has come. Uh, because uh, that would be the catalyst for which they are to put him to death. Uh, they really, the ball started really moving at this point in time. And I think Jesus knew that it would happen. Um, so, so back to the question then, since this is such an, a, a key piece of the puzzle, such an important event, why would it be mentioned in the other Gospels? I know you're waiting for an answer. <laughs> I'm certain you don't have one. <laughs> I'm not sure I have a definitive answer. I did, I did look at uh, one, one commentary had an interesting thought, because none of them really have an answer for sure. But they said, many believe now, now, think about when the other Gospels were written. <coughs> John's Gospel is written so much later. John's Gospel is written after pretty much everyone has died. 
John lived to be 90, so he wrote the gospel at the end of his life, and he was quite young to begin with. So all the other disciples were dead. Um, so many believe, you know, because this was a close-knit group, uh, the disciples and the, the, the women. And, the, you know, it's like, uh, you know, the disciples all knew Mary and Martha and Lazarus. You know, they pretty much stayed at their house several times, you know, so, so, it's, it's, so they would have been known by, by all of them. And even after Jesus' crucifixion, Mary and Martha probably still would have been good friends, and Lazarus would have been good friends with the disciples. Uh, and, uh, and they were part of those early believers. Um, so, a theory is that uh, Lazarus was still alive when Matthew, Mark, and Luke wrote the Gospels. Uh, and, and out of respect for Lazarus, fearing that if word got out about it, you know, even though the Pharisees knew about it, uh, they kind of kept his name out of the Gospel uh, because they didn't want anything to happen to Lazarus. Interesting theory. I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, but it's just uh, a thought is that you know, and John, it's like you know, you know we'll, we'll wait for John to write his gospel. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if they knew he was going to write a gospel, uh, but uh, but Lazarus was still alive, uh, so there was there was out of protecting him. I, yeah, I don't know. It's an interesting theory. Uh, I hadn't really heard of any other theory. And I, and I only researched it for a couple hours, so I might look again and just see, you know, why is it in the other gospel? See if there's any other theories out there. Uh, but anyway, so it's not mentioned in any of the other gospels. But personality-wise, Martha, and back to your point, Barb, it's like, uh, yeah, um, it was Martha that runs out and meets up uh, and kind of s secretly. Because once again, I think they all knew that Jesus... You know, It'd be risky for him to come back, uh, but still, Mary and Martha thought surely he'd come back once he heard that Lazarus was ill. Um, but he he could not have gotten back in time anyway, because think about that. He was two days away. He was two days away. Um. And so he waited two days. When he finally got back, he'd been dead four days. And so, so once he got word that Lazarus was ill, pretty much at that time is when Lazarus died. Um, and so I don't know if you've heard that, you may have heard all this before or not, but, uh, uh, but I mean, everyone is pretty much in consensus that uh, he waited two days so that, so that he would have been dead for four days when he got back. Because it was pretty much a common belief that, that if, you're, if you're still dead after four days, you're dead. <laughs> there, there's no chance of coming back. Yeah, I know, there's, like, there's science there. Um, and, and uh, you know, it, I don't know. It's like, it's like there's still a chance of resuscitation because maybe they've, they've seen it happen before that, well, we thought he was dead, but maybe he's not really dead. Uh, but, uh, but removing all doubt. And so Jesus wanted everyone to realize that he, had, he was able to raise the dead. Um, he wanted them to know that. And he actually says so that, the glory, so that people would glorify God. Um, so, so, yeah, so he knew this would be a very pivotal time uh, in, you know, it's like this is the beginning of the end. He knew that that would happen. Um, but, you know, so, so why did he raise Lazarus? He, he, did he, he raised Lazarus to, to show the power of God. He didn't really raise him because he's a good friend. It's like, Oh, okay, well, I'll give him special favor. <laughs> He's a good friend of mine. I, I'm, I'm close to the family, so I'll, I'll raise him. Um, because I've often, I'll, I'll, you know, it's like we don't, hear, we don't hear of anything from Lazarus, which is really interesting. Uh, I would like to have, have heard from, from him. 
uh, you know, especially after being raised. It's like, what, 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 what were your thoughts when Jesus called you out of the tomb? Uh, had to have been mixed emotions. Probably glad to see his sisters again. But if he had actually gone into heaven and, and been called back, it's like, it's like I can see God in heaven. It's like, uh, well, Lazarus, you're not going to be here for very long. But I'm not sending you to hell. I'm just sending you back to the world <laughs> to, 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 to prove a point, uh, to show the glory of God. And of course, Lazarus is like, oh, okay. <laughs> he, he probably was a willing servant. But, uh, but yeah, for Lazarus, to, you know, because Lazarus came back to life only to die again. You know, and, and that's, that's the biggest thing about, you know, because Paul in 1 Corinthians talk about Jesus as the first fruits of those who are fallen asleep. You know, his resurrection is the first fruits. The idea that he was the very first to be raised. And then people say, well, Lazarus was raised. Jairus' daughter was raised. Uh, Elijah raised, you know, Elisha, some, a girl in the Old Testament. Uh, you know, so there's been different people who have come back to life. Uh, how could you say that Jesus was the first? Um, there's a difference between Jesus' resurrection and other, others coming back to life. Because when Lazarus came back to life, he didn't receive a spiritual body. He didn't receive a resurrected body. So resuscitation might be a better way of, you know, but we don't want to say resuscitation because then you feel... Well, that person never, never really died. You know, it's like, a, you, you ever heard the story of Eutychus? Eutychus. I, I know Sandy knows Eutychus. You, you know, I don't mean to call you out. But, uh, but Eutychus is, uh, is the man who fell out of the window when Paul was preaching. Paul was preaching on and on and on and on and on. And he even talked about candles were filled the room. And so you can imagine just the... Just, uh, the scent of the candles and, and the fumes uh, that, and, and of course, why was he sitting in the window? To get some fresh air. <laughs> why else would you sit in the window? And uh, so he fell asleep, he f fell out of the window while Paul was preaching. And, and, and it said that Paul went down there and laid himself three times on the board. Uh, he came back to life and he went back and started preaching again. Uh, it's a funny story, but, uh, but many would say, well, when he laid on the boy three times, that was, uh, he was giving him CPR. So, so when it says that he died, he really didn't die. It's like, well, we need to take scripture at his, at his word. He did die. Um, when he fell out the window. And Paul brought him back to life. But of course, you know, you could question that. You can debate that. You can't debate Lazarus. He was dead four days. <laughs> there's, there's, no, there's no question. People might de debate uh, Jairus' daughter that she really hadn't died. Uh, that he just resuscitated her kind of thing. Uh, Lazarus is a completely different animal. Um, but his raising, his res he didn't have a resurrected body. Because Jesus' body appeared two men the road to Emmaus and he appeared to the men in the upper room he met them behind locked doors you know that resurrected body is not limited to time or space be it one place and another place uh, walk through walls I mean there's no limitation to the resurrected body which, which is an indication of what's going to happen to us when we're raised from the dead uh, that we too will have a resurrected body that will no longer die um Completely different. So, uh, yeah, Mary and Martha, different personalities. Um, Martha just blurts out, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Um, okay, we're kind of getting into the next section here. But anyway, uh, just finishing this first page, um, uh, they sent word, the one you love is ill. Now, now, it's interesting, I read something somewhere, which I find it interesting. Um, a message was sent. A courier or something like that, somebody on a horse, whatever. This, uh, however long it took, 
to get the message from Bethany because it was two days walk. Uh, but I guess, I don't know, uh, this is before the Pony Express days, but, but maybe it's like a Pony Express. They sent him a message. Now, what did the message say? It didn't say, this is Mary and Martha, your, our brother Lazarus is ill. That was not the message that was sent. Uh, he whom you love is ill. Which is really kind of an odd way of, of phrasing a message sent by a courier. Uh, but not if you're a wanted man. Uh, not if uh, people were trying to stone him and he slipped away. Uh, so, yeah, the disciples are questioning whether or not he ought to go back. It's like, Lord, you did, did, you did remember how we left, <laughs> them wanting to stone you. Uh, Mary and Martha would have known that as well. Uh, so they really sent a cryptic message of the, the one you, whom you love is ill. Um, Jesus would have known. Of course, Jesus would have known anyway. <laughs> But, uh, but anyway, but they sent that in, in, in such a way where, uh, you know, if, if the name Lazarus would have been on that message, uh, people would have known that this message was intended for Jesus. You know, I, I just read that somewhere, which I thought, well, that makes sense. Because why phrase it that way? Lord, he whom you love is ill. He heard it. Um, this illness does not lead to death. Well, yes, it does. <laughs> but uh, what is the death that Jesus is talking about? Eternal death. The glory of God, is, God's going to be glorified through that. Uh, he loved Mary, sister, Martha, her sister, and Lazarus. <laughs> now we leave Mary's name out. Well, okay. Um, but he stayed two days. And then he says, let us go to Judea. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews uh, you're seeking to stone you. Are you going, to, going there? And of course, he said, are there not 12 days? Um, I want to jump ahead to verse 16. Thomas called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. You know, I, I preached on, you know, the Sunday after Easter is Doubting Thomas Sunday is what it's often been called because Thomas doubted. Um, Thomas is another interesting personality. Probably very similar to Martha. Martha almost like had no fear. You know, she just was blurted it out. Um, we criticize Thomas for doubting, unless I see the nail marks. He wanted proof. Um, so he's, he's, he has a personality that he, he questions everything. He's like, Okay, show me. Show me proof. Um, kind of part of his personality, but also he's very bold. Why were the disciples meeting behind locked doors after Jesus rose from the dead? Specifically, locked doors. They were afraid. And he even says that they were there of fear of the Jews. They were afraid that what happened to Jesus is going to happen to them. These were a bunch of scared rabbits fearful at least maybe with the exception of Thomas <laughs> Thomas wasn't there he was going about his business uh, you know some said maybe because he was mourning in his own way um, I don't know uh, but but I think many people point out that that he was he was pretty bold he was pretty courageous especially in light of these words it's like, uh, let's go to Jer Jerusalem. No, nah, you know, we don't want to go. And then Thomas said, well, let us also go, that we may die with him. So like, if he's to die, well, we'll die with him. Like, that's pretty bold. Um, so I think we get a little glimpse of Thomas's personality. Uh, that, that let us also go, go, that we may die with him. Uh, called the twin. Usually everybody has a Hebrew name and a Greek name. Uh, Thomas Didymus in the Greek called the twin um, now here's an interesting theory don't know why the twin <clears throat> did he have a twin brother 
or twin sister, I guess. Um, possibly. But some actually speculated that the twin meant that he looked a lot like Jesus, which is interesting. Because if he called the twin because you look a lot like the person you're following, your, your, your master. So if, if they actually ought to go back to Jerusalem and he wants to go with them, he could easily be mistaken for Jesus. <laughs> and so it makes it even, even bolder, uh, the fact that he's willing to go back to Jerusalem. Um, which which I, I, once again, it's kind of a theory. But, uh, but he's known as the twin. Um, that was like a decoy. Yeah, well, he could have been, could have been used as a decoy. Uh, he would have been fine with that. He would have been fine with that, Bob. What's the significance of the half a day for twelve dollars? Well, uh, I mean, and of course, uh, I mean that literally is not true. It's twelve hours a day, twelve hours a night, you know. But uh, but kind of uh, the day split up. It's like half the day in the daytime, half the night, you know. So it's, it's kind of literally not. That's not how. Of course, what we know. <laughs> That's not how it breaks down, especially if you live in Alaska. But <laughs> some parts of the year is 18 hours a day. Uh, some parts of the year is 18 hours a night. Uh, down on the equator, I don't know. Is it perfectly even, 12-12 on the equator? Depends on if you, if you consider dusk and dawn as night. Um, I don't know. How, do, how does the sun work uh, if you're on the equator? Is it exactly 12-12? Closer. It would be much closer than if in yeah, off the equator, and uh, and isn't Jerusalem right on the equator? Well, not on an equator; they're north of the equator. Yeah. Equator goes through northern Africa, but so if it goes through northern Africa, it goes, and they're not that far north of the equator, you know. So so anyway, so it's just uh, uh, I think the ways the Greek the Greeks understood the day. 12 hours a day, 12 hours a night. And so the point Jesus is making is like, while it's day, do your work. Um, and uh, let God use you. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think. Of, okay, we're 9 through 16. Um, Pastor? Yes. Have a, it's his... Um, how long is a how long is a day in Hebrew? I looked up length of day in Judea. Um, it's the sometimes called halachic hour, seasonal hour, and variable hour. It's a term used in the rabbinic Jewish law that assigns twelve hours to each day and twelve hours to each night, all throughout the year. Mm -hmm. So that's how they. Yeah. And of course, literally, we know it's a little bit more than the other. But yeah, it's dusk and dawn. Are they? Uh, is it night or day? <laughs> so, um, so they divide that in half, uh, so with the idea that you have opportunity to, to to accomplish something during the day, and that's kind of what Jesus is talking about. Uh, you have time to accomplish something, uh, and what did he came come to accomplish? Saving the world. Um, but anyway, our, our friend Lazarus, uh, okay, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, and they said, no, he's, he's dead. He's died. So he, he spoke very plainly. Uh, they weren't getting it, so, so he made sure that they got it. Um, to the, so he goes to Bethany. Of course, that's, he's a wanted man in Jerusalem, and Jerusalem is only two miles from Bethany. And so they knew that. And so you kind of see some secret stuff going on. Uh, Martha heard Jesus was coming, went out to meet him. Um, but Mary remained seated at the house. So is Martha mad at Jesus? He just kind of questions if you'd been here. He, she had the faith to believe if you had been here, he would not have died. Um, but even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. So what is she asking? Is she asking him to raise her, raise her brother? Um, I 
your brother will rise again. I know he will rise. Which is also an interesting statement of faith. To believe in the resurrection in the last day. That was not really that common of a belief. The scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, they all had their own opinions regarding the resurrection uh, and eternal life. So it's not, it's not really a doctrine that was necessarily taught, but, but Martha believed in it. Um, I am the resurrection and the life. And this is, of course, another one of those I am passages. You know how, and I, and I kind of harp on this before I did this with I am the good shepherd, I am the light of the world, uh, I am the door, I am the vine, you are the branches. All these I am passages, I am the resurrection and the life. You know, how could you not hear that and not think that Jesus is claiming to be God? I am, I am the resurrection. I bring you back from death to life, eternal life, spiritual life. Even though he die, yet shall he live, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Obviously he's talking about spiritual life, spiritual death. Yes, Lord, I believe you are the Christ who is coming to the world. Now think about that, because that's pretty much the same confession that Peter made. You are the Christ who is coming to the world. But what did Peter believe regarding the Christ? When Jesus said, I'm going to suffer and die, know that, you know, we have that in our gospel reading today. Surely this will not happen to you. Now, Martha, yes, Lord, I believe you are the Christ who is coming to the world. Uh, right after him saying that everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. And it seems like the, the women certainly have a greater faith than the men. I think we see that also at the resurrection of Jesus. Uh, the women tend to believe more so than what we see of the men. Um, did Martha understand the, the Messiah and, the, and the, the purpose of the Messiah? When she said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in private, the teacher's here. So we're still kind of somewhat clandestine, keeping him out of the spotlight. Uh, of course, she rose, um, and the people who were in the house kind of went with her. That They're going to the tomb. So, so they're, they're keeping all this stuff secret. Well, it doesn't remain a secret. And Jesus kind of understands that that's all going to happen. You know, they're doing their best to kind of keep it out of the spotlight, but as they go to the tomb, everybody else goes with them. Uh, so it turns into a very public spectacle. Um, now, Jesus weeping. People have often said that's the shortest verse in the Bible. And in the English it is. Jesus wept. But you know the shortest verse in the Bible in the Greek? I might have shared this before. It's not Jesus wept. It's 1 Thessalonians 5.17. Which is pray continuously. Or pray unceasingly. You know the Greek pray unceasingly. Jesus wept actually is one character shorter. <laughs> so pray continually. Uh, so, so and, and yeah, both of them are just two words long. So, so you think of the, the two shortest, you, you can just say the two shortest verses in the Bible is Jesus wept and pray continually. Um, which pray continually is a great verse. Jesus wept, which is interesting to highlight that. But what, what do you get from that? Jesus wept. 
Why did Jesus weep? Lazarus. His love for Lazarus, but I mean, he knew he was going to raise him from the dead. Um, because his ministry is running out of time? Could be, yeah. Ministry running out of time. Um, Let's see. Uh, let's, let's look at the context. And now when Mary and Martha, uh, verse 32, came to Jesus and saw him, she fell at his feet. Lord, have you been... Uh, when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? They said, Lord, come and see Jesus wept. Uh, see how he loved him. Um, when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come you know I, I think I think a lot, of, a lot you can look at that what greatly moves me is seeing other people hurt I typically do not cry over anything that has happened to me that doesn't move me nearly as much as seeing other people hurt. You know, that's how it is with me. But I mean, I think with Jesus, I'm not comparing myself to Jesus, but I think uh, he was deeply moved as he saw everybody else moved. Um, and also, I think part of his sorrow, also, I think, is seeing people not fully understanding life and death. Uh, the resurrection of the dead eternal life. Thinking everything in terms of this world. And I think that does move, that moved him because how, when else was Jesus deeply moved? You know, he's also deeply moved with uh, when uh, oh, oh Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who killed the prophets and stoned those sent to you. You know, he was mournful when he saw his people rejecting God and not fully understanding what God has come to do and I think I might that might be part of the morning not fully understanding um, and of course people say could he not have opened the eyes of the blind and kept man, this man from dying you know they still thinking Jesus had the has the ability to heal and had he been there early enough he could have healed him now it's too late well, no, it's not too late. <laughs> as, as we're going to see when he raises him from the dead. Uh, and, that, and once again, that's the straw that broke the camel's back for the Pharisees. He's like, okay, we got, we got to stop this. Which, which is, begs the question, it's like, why not believe? If he can heal from the dead, obviously this person's from God. But yet they still fail to believe. And of course, in our theology, we understand that there's no way they can believe without the Holy Spirit. I believe I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, to come to him. You know, that's, that's Luther's explanation of the third article of the Creed. You know, so there's no way they could believe without faith. And so, even though it's evident, even though it's obvious to us, it's not obvious to others. You know, so I, I, that comforts me to a certain extent. I mean, it saddens me when I see ignorant people in the world. Uh, but it comforts me because when I see ignorant people, spiritually ignorant people, I understand that there's no way they, they can see the light because they don't have faith to see the light. You know, when you hear politicians, when you hear people uh, persecuting Christians, it saddens us, but it's understandable because they don't have Christ in them to see that. So, anyway, so let me, let me close uh, with the benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be in abide with us all. Amen. You're going to have Pastor Mitchell next week. So I'll probably still do something with the faith at home uh, so something will be up. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, you'll have some Pastor Mitchell next week. So.